This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. Our next guest is a very brave man. He is ready. Not only is he ready, he is willing to answer your medical questions. No topic off limits. And you remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. We've addressed some topics uh, that were quite interesting. Topics you might be a bit too bashful to bring up with your own doctor, but topics that might impact so many people. What's on the docket today? Well, let's turn to PRMC's Chief Informatics Officer and Hospitalist, Dr. Chris Snyder, to find out. Thanks for joining us. I know docket is a, is a, is a lawyer term. You're a doctor, so, but you're, you're okay with that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Call we me what say, you want. We, <laughs> <laughs> we can say, what's, up, what's, what's on the medical records today? Okay, first up, we're going to talk about carpal tunnel. What are the signs? Uh, this reader or viewer wants to know about preventative measures and could it be caused by too much typing? Yeah, a lot of people get this, um, typing any increased activity of the hands, um, so repetitive use of the hands. Uh, injury can also cause, and basically there's a large nerve that runs right down the middle of your palm here, mm -hmm. affects the fingers and the way they move. Um, that can be entrapped. There's a ligament that can actually grab it and kind of trap the nerve. It can cause an impingement. Uh, when that does, it can create numbness, tingling, and actually even loss of function if it gets severe. A um, lot of times it's physical therapy first and then surgical uh, treatment after that, mm. but um, um, we have some really good hand surgeons around here who do a lot of that work, but it's a common procedure. Yeah, okay. All right, this, I can admit this one got my interest. Uh, a lady wrote in, my husband has a spot on his leg that looks like a broken blood vessel. It often changes shapes, and at times he says it throbs. Any ideas what this could be? So there's a lot of things I like to look at before I make a comment, but yeah. just guessing. It's a, it's a superficial vein. You've heard of varicose veins, right. and most people know what those are. They tend to pop out. Some of them can get real superficial, um, and they will change based on the amount of volume of uh, blood that's in that vein. So um, they can be seen, they can actually pop, and if you get larger veins, then they can really become very painful too under the skin. So uh, there are some surgical procedures, injections they can do for those, but that's probably what that is. But without really laying my eyes on, it's kind of tough to tell. So it's probably a good idea just to get it checked out. Most definitely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, this this next one, I have a spot on my arm that itches every so often. It's been like this for a couple of years. So there's no rash. It just itches. What could it be? Yeah, again, nerves have a weird way of displaying themselves. Everybody thinks of nerve pain. Nobody thinks of itching as a nerve response, but it is a sensory response. So occasionally it can be a nerve injury further up, and this is just displaying it down further in your arm or leg or wherever it might be from a nerve impingement syndrome, much like the, the carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get that tingling, that burning, that itching um, that can occur. If there's no rash or lesion there, usually it, as long as it resolves itself and it's te uh, temporary, it's fine. But if it's persistent, definitely get somebody to, to palpate it make sure there's no lumps or bumps around it right mm. make sure all right here's one i have such a hard time getting my two-year-old to eat well there's your first problem right there um yeah, he'll have a couple of nibbles of fruit or pasta and then he's done some nights he doesn't want to eat anything should i be concerned yeah pediatrics is one of these things kids uh we, we tend to overfeed them um and you know they tend to eat large meals uh, adults do that right i think that's probably why we have obesity <laughs> problems mm -hmm. um so eating too much is a, a bad habit so kids are probably doing the right thing they're eating smaller amounts more frequently that's what you have to focus on in that younger population obviously if they're not gaining weight or you see growth chart abnormalities with their pediatricians and you probably need to be concerned but most kids uh, tend to pick a lot more um, so and it's challenging for parents to have six meals a day versus three so mm -hmm. we're busy people and taking care of three four five six kids whatever you have in your house could be a, a challenge yeah, with that. that so yeah. maybe we shouldn't be pushing the happy plate well, no, the happy plate's great. I mean, kids need to eat, eat well, um, and trying to give them things that are appropriate, too. But volume, as far as volume goes, if they're picking, that's kind of normal in that mm -hmm. age group. Um, some kids overeat at that age, too, so mm -hmm. that's another bad thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then finally, does the recent time change have any impact on our health? Health, um, mental status possibly, <laughs> that light and dark thing. I know it feels better getting up in the morning with light, but in the evenings it's a bit of a challenge um, getting home every night at 5 o'clock and it's pitch black. So yeah. um, I think seasonal affective disorder definitely has a, a role with that. And, uh, you know, again, we, we sun lamps, I, I know a couple of my partners actually use those because we tend to spend a lot of time in the hospital. Um, but uh, I think sun lamps, um, sun in, in general makes you feel 
um, enlightened so and feel better about yourself. So I think it's uh, definitely an effect of your environment that you feel with that. What about citrus? I've heard that like smelling on an orange or can help. Have you I, heard that? Yeah, no, I think that a lot of people try different things. Mm -hmm. There's different stimulations that make people feel better or energetic. Caffeine's a, a big one for mm -hmm. folks too. Um, but uh, citrus, I, I'm sure, has a has a stimulating effect. Makes you feel like you're in Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. You say that'll do it. That Absolutely. would do it right there. Me too. <laughs> all right. Well, Dr. Snyder, we're just getting started with you. We have all those questions. Uh, we want to address something else, and that would be visits to the hospital. Studies show every year one in 25 patients comes down with an infection they got while staying in the hospital. Something called C. diff is the most common hospital acquired infection, but other uh, infections include MRSA and catheter and surgical site infections. Here are a few ways you can cut down your risk of infection. Cheryl Arriridan stays active as she can while undergoing chemotherapy for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. But it was what she caught during chemo that put an end to her active lifestyle. Clostridium difficile or C. diff. It felt like the lining of my colon was being ripped out. That's the best way I can describe it. The environment becomes contaminated and people are debilitated and subject to easy infection in the hospital. Some bacteria can linger for weeks. To cut down on your risk, bring sanitary wipes to clean the bed rails, call button and TV remote, and don't forget light switches and doorknobs. One study found cleaning crews often overlook these areas. If you need surgery, choose a surgeon with a low infection rate. Surgeons know the rate of infection for various procedures. Don't be afraid to ask for it. If hair needs to be removed from the surgical site, ask that clippers be used instead of a razor, which can create small nicks in the skin where bacteria can enter. And finally, stop smoking well before your surgery. Patients who smoke are three times as likely to develop a surgical site infection as non-smokers. A Reardon has learned you can never be too cautious. I'm not a germaphobic. It's just that I don't want to go through this again, ever, ever. And research shows proper hand hygiene is the single most important factor in preventing these infections. Yet, one study found only 15% of hospital staff and visitors used the hand washing station. Oh, but get this. Researchers found that putting a photograph of a man's angry looking eyes above the hand gel dispenser in hospital rooms had a subconscious effect on people and increased hand washing by 33%. Now, um, Doc, this is something that you have always been adamant about is hand <laughs> hygiene. It, it, wash your hands. I know you love this stuff. I know I love this stuff. You and I have always, you've taught me to bump elbows. I just did hygiene on my shoe. You did, yeah, um, you got all the way down to your shoelaces. So, so uh, the hand hygiene is really an important thing. It is, yeah, and you know, again, we, we've been in healthcare in the last five years, probably more than any time, um, I've been in practice over 20, um, have really emphasized that uh, with the alcohol wash stations that are everywhere. Um, and we do track providers, we actually do at PRMC, we actually go in and monitor providers, nurses, taxi, clergy, everybody, um, even families we educate on this regularly to make sure you're going in and hitting the alcohol scrub when you come in or washing your hands with hot soapy water. Right. So yeah, absolutely, it's a, it's a huge, and in fact, it becomes habitual after a while. Um, luckily, the soaps have gotten better, so it's not tearing up our hands as much, but um, it definitely, uh, definitely plays a role. So we just heard some ways to cut down infection when going into the hospital. Is there anything else you wanna to add to that? Yeah, we, we have age groups, so avoiding bringing children into a sick, pa sick patient's room. Again, you, you guys got to realize we have sick people. Mm -hmm. um, our folks are sick. They're immunocompromised. The environment normally doesn't support illness well, and infection is one of those unfortunate outcomes that affect cancer patients, much like the uh, uh, person on the on this show. So, so again, when you're under chemo, when you're infected already, when you have diabetes and you have w uh, wounds, etc., right. anytime you break that barrier, um, the body tends to have bacteria on it for a reason. So it just over overgrows at that point. So basically a cut on your leg, C. diffs caused by antibiotics the majority of the time. It can be also caused by chemo and a number of other things. Mm -hmm. so, so whatever you can do to avoid bringing a nidus of 
exposure into the room. Um, but, but clearly the hands are probably the one things that, that can really kill a patient if they give them an infection with it. Well, our hands are, are pretty clean right now, so we can actually shake hands and say thank you so much. But you guys are still going to okay. bump elbows. Okay. Yeah, don't be insulted by it. Yeah. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And nobody noticed that we had the Del Marva Life uh, uh, hand like sanitizer. sanitizer. That's case. pretty cool. Never know thank you so much. And if you would thank like you. to read more about Peninsula Regional Medical Center or to submit a question to our Ask the Doc series, go to delmarvalife.com.